All right, this week we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of doing missing and or vanished, we are going to focus on a murder where multiple people could have been involved. Now, I want to get your take on who could have committed this crime based off some of the facts that I'm going to give you. So I'm going to start with the story and then I'll end with who I think did it. And then I will get your take on who you think did it. So the story we're going to hit today is the story of Candace Hiltz. And who is Candace Hiltz? Candace Hiltz was a young single mother who was 17 years old, who is at Bingham University as a junior and had aspirations to move on to Stanford Law School where she had been accepted. Now, it has been said that she is very intelligent and had an affinity for the law and was really looking forward to going to Stanford. Big accomplishment on her part. Now, that was all ripped away from her on August 10th, 2006. Now, essentially what happened is a little bit of hearsay, but sheriff's deputy from Colorado came out to Candace's mom's house, Dolores, and was asking about the whereabouts of her son, James, or Candace's brother, James. And during that conversation, at some point, Candace was getting upset with the sheriff's deputy because of his demeanor and his tone of voice and the way that he was asking questions to her mother, Dolores. She had asked that deputy to leave, and it also had said that uh, she knew about some drugs and that she knew what was going on with the sheriff's deputy. The sheriff's deputy did, in fact, um, threaten to arrest her at some point if she continued to be aggressive. And that never happened, of course, but it was just a weird interaction altogether. Okay. Fast forward three days later on the 13th, the family dog ends up dead and uh, there's no real reason why that would have happened, but there were some suspicions that came up. Dolores goes to town a couple of days later, comes back, sees that her granddaughter is by herself in the house and ends up finding Candace dead from gunshot wounds. Now, the story kind of takes a twist right here. Originally, the authorities thought that James was the one that committed the murder. They basically said that James was, you know, not in his right mind and that for whatever reason that uh, he ended up killing his sister. Now, it has been stated that James had broken into the mother's house in the past and maybe that this was a trend and an easy way to go after um, somebody that could potentially be the killer. So a couple of things popped up in this case that were kind of weird. And uh, this is what really kind of brings the theories and the speculation out from the sheriff's deputies. One, there wasn't really a good handling of the crime scene. As stated, the crime scene wasn't protected very well. People were coming and going and nobody was really controlling what that crime scene looked like. It was also stated by the mother Dolores that it didn't really feel like the sheriff's deputies were really trying to solve the case because she really felt like it was one of her own or one of their own that participated in it, right? Now, during the autopsy, they did find two different bullets. So they said that there was a couple of different assailants and that, uh, there, would, there had to have been multiple people that committed this crime. And then the case went cold for about 10 years. Fast forward 10 years, somebody went and bought a new storage locker. That storage locker, when opened up, had some evidence from the case 10 years prior. And this is where it kind of gets weird because it really felt like that evidence was placed there and that uh, they knew that that evidence was placed there, but it never really made its way out. And that kind of screamed cover up from the sheriff's department. Now somebody was charged in that and it was the lead investigator for the case. Now he was only charged for a misdemeanor for misplacing evidence. And it was said that he did it by accident. But where the questions come in for me is why was it in a storage lockup? Why wouldn't it be somewhere, say at the police station in the evidence room or something like that, right? So the theory kind of goes like this. One, was it a random attack? Was it two people that came in? Maybe they were trying to rob the house. Maybe they were associates of James. Maybe he owed him money, whatever the case might've been. And were they the ones that did it? 
Number two, was it the brother? Was it James? Did he come in? Maybe he had a friend that did it and did whatever he did for whatever reason. Maybe he didn't think Candace was going to be in the house that day and he decided to break in. He got spooked. They end up killing her and then they move on. That would be your number two. Or was it number three where the sheriff's deputies were involved and because Candace was threatening to come forward with the drug accusations on a specific sheriff's deputy who was at the house and got into that argument with Candace, was that the one that ended up murdering Candace and ended up getting off on that murder? Because I believe that is also the one that led the investigation in the case. So I want to hear from you. Is it number one? Is it number two? Or is it number three? Or is it something totally different that maybe I haven't even hit in that story that you can help me out with? And if you do, leave those comments down below. So again, this week a little bit different. We may do a missing person for later on this week for New Year's Day. But for right now, I want to bring in a little bit of a different direction each week. We're going to try some new things to see what you, the viewer, likes. And your feedback is obviously going to help me and get me to where I need to get you to bring you the best content. So with that being said, I'm your host, Tim Solberg. I hope you like the content. Hit that subscribe and like down below. And I can't wait to see you till my next video.